Hello and welcome everyone to Twin Flames, the great spiritual awakening podcast where every week you can hear real life stories from people who answer the call of divine love. My name is Dennis, I'm a certified ascension coach with Twin Flames Universe and your host. And yeah, I've been on my Twin Flame journey for a couple of years now and thanks to the teachings of Union, found my true Twin Flame that I'm living in Union with. For our episode today, I'm really happy to welcome here with me Liana. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Yeah, Liana. In Dutch, it's Liana, but it's okay. Yeah, okay. happy to be here. Yeah. Okay. It's it's great to have you today. And yeah, how, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Wonderful. You have a very... Yeah, I can I can probably say like different story than most people I've had so far, where in your case you actually men, met your true twin film before you found the teachings of Union. Yeah. And you didn't know he was your true twin flame. And at the same time, you also kind of met a false twin flame mm -hmm. and didn't know what was going on there for some time. And yeah, that's just a sneak peek into your journey. So I'm I'm looking forward to hear from you today how all of that happened and how you then found the teachings of union and what changed afterwards but to say chronologically I want to go back to the beginning of your journey which for you started in high school mm -hmm. when you already awakened to the twin flame journey so my first question to you is back then in high school what what happened was that like a conscious awakening to I know I'm now on my journey to finding my one true love or how did it feel? Well, it was more like, yeah, I was a teenager and of course I started to like wanting to be with someone like all abnormal languages with boys and stuff and I wanted to fall in love. That's, yeah, at the time I felt also something deeper than that. I wanted to find my one true love. I wanted to find done and then stay with that and not go to all these different yeah mm -hmm. that, that's that's what I felt at the time that was for me like yeah logical to just found that one person I I want to love and yeah that's kind of where it started I didn't know twin flames or anything just that mm -hmm. and then yeah. When was the first time you actually came upon the term twin flame? So realized consciously that oh, that's what you would be looking for. Um, but I was, yeah, that was the term twin flame was later on when I was with someone else living and didn't work out so much. So I was looking up stuff how to better relationship. And then I saw the term twin flame that there's, but that was described as someone who is temporary in your life to make a big change mm. and then yeah, for a short time. And the, so that didn't speak so much to me. So I closed it off for a while, but I don't want that. I want my love. And yeah, and it was only later on when actually I already met my twin flame and I started to see the term again. So so when you first saw it you you like saw it and then you kind of didn't know what to what to do with it no yeah I, I really that idea that there's someone like me like a male version like me it was really speaking to me oh what I, would my other i'm there's another me walking around on earth and i was like that's interesting and how does that work um i was just curious but this whole thing, like uh, big change and dramatic and painful and all that, that was like, oh, I don't want that. Mm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and yeah, after that, actually, then that's when actually I met my false twin flame. Mm. Because, um, yeah, the, the soulmate I was with didn't work out so well. And I really decided something deeper and... Yeah, my first TV was actually that big change and painful. And, and then I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I met my TV because it was the description. 
I got back down. So, so was... how? Oh, go ahead, please. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I still closed it off, but I was already starting to think back about that. So. Mm, I see. So how how did you meet your thoughts to inflame? Do you feel uh, like? Um, I mean, even before, like, do you feel like you? You made a shift in your life, like a new choice, so that he mm -hmm. can. Live. So, what what was that shift that attracted him? Well, I just mostly I want to feel feel more again, and mm. I wasn't happy with my life. I wanted to change my life. It was also around 2012 when this big conscious shift was. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make a big change in my life and I mostly want to fall in love again and have all the things I didn't experience with uh, my soulmates back then. Um, and I felt also a really deep desire for going back home. I felt this loneliness, like I want to feel home again or like, yeah, feel really home. Um, and actually I was like then following my dreams, like I just follow my dreams. I make my yeah, dreams come true. And I was at the time um, with performing for a theater and expressing that I had a whole character designed and uh, played for kids and stuff. And I was like reading my dream. And, and then I wanted to make a show like a theater show um, and placed like an advertisement online and he, he reacted on that and he was even like okay um I, I didn't think about um actually creating a show with someone it was like maybe someday but he when I spoke with him he asked asked me what I want and I told him that that I wanted to Show and he was like, okay, I help you. And uh, he was a theater director and mm. very experienced. And he was like, oh, my world dream is coming true and life is changing. And and I felt so much. And there was also a lot of fears, uh, facing fears. And yeah, I felt really stronger. And yeah. That's why I thought like, oh, this is my two thing because there was so much happening that was, yeah, felt like a dream coming through. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I see. And that was also at the same time where you unknowingly moved in together with your true twin film, actually, right? Um, yeah, that happened later. I first left that soulmate because, mm -hmm. yeah, I was falling in love with, with that other guy. And that was already a big change for me, like, after a lot, a lot of living together, um, to just leave and to, yeah, change. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and then I stayed for a while back to my parents, or my parents' house, like where I grew up. And yeah, that was a big contest also. And really after a while, when I started to look for a home, that's when I start to meet my true to blame and um, was actually even the false twin fame already started to break up with me so I was really pressured more even to yeah that I desired even more love uh, real love and and to yeah really find my own place and yeah grow up in a way mm -hmm. so yeah this was um yeah, that was also yeah, a really dark time in a way because yeah, this whole dream going through and then breaking up again. So like this roller coaster, like um so yeah, it was really I had a really strong desire to receive love, like real love and and yeah live as an adult and not like with my parents. Or like anyone, and, yeah. Mm, I see. And, she, yeah. and was this then when you found Twin Films Universe and the teachings of Union when this was happening? Uh, not yet. No. Not yet. 
No. So what what followed after you moved in with your your true twin flame? Um, well, lots more contrast and mm. pressure actually, because I was still, I was yeah with the theater group of my positive flame, and because uh, since I moved in, yeah, he really didn't want anything to do with me anymore. Like yeah, even more than before, and. Um, And the show went really bad as well, I think. Uh, chaotic and lots of fears. And um, yeah, and that, that's where I started to actually be interested in spiritual awakening. Because mm. I saw the solution. I was really like on my edge, you know, like um, I didn't know any. So legit, like normal therapy or anything was not enough for me. So, and back then I had the, was the um, ayahuasca one time. And that's when I started to, yeah, be interested in the spirituality and watched videos about spiritual awakening and all of that. And yeah, I saw it then. A vision that I, I already met my twin flame or like my one true love and that I could rest and this was really very gentle like uh, step by step like okay I, I actually desire to wake up spiritually and first getting to know that what that all means and yeah it was only after a year or so um That I saw the term twin flames again, but then in another way that, um, yeah, no, uh, in a weird way, that's, yeah, there was the idea that you're born um, with a normal twin, but then lost it in a womb or something. And then there's also uh, that you can only solve it with your twin flame. And it was like, I felt that, that I was really missing some very deeply. And I thought it was that, but um, yeah, that was my way of going back, back to it. Um, yeah, and then I saw twin flames. And then I saw that, yeah, that you can be together mm. uh, somewhere. And then was, oh, I want this. Uh, I was really relieved and I was really happy. So, oh, I found my twin flame. I passed it and I thought, but yeah, I felt really happy that I found what I was looking for. And, and only after that, when I started looking up information, I found uh, Jeff Elise, Julia and the teachings. So, mm. Yeah. How, how did you find them? And when you found them, what... How did you feel about it? What like clicked for you? Um, yeah, I was on YouTube. Mm. Yeah, I was really very eager to learn everything about two things. So um, when I saw them on YouTube, I, f I saw some other people, but I felt I could trust them. I felt really comfortable with their, yeah, with their video. So yeah, I was really interested to, um, yeah, listen and information so mm. yeah. and you i i i'm not quite when did you because you became a live twin film ascension school yeah. student were you there from the very beginning or did you join in a bit where the classes were already running um i joined before the classes were recorded just oh. before a few weeks before mm. i think um also my first actually my second was literally on my birthday it was like a big sign like oh. here's your birthday gift so, like yeah so it's really cool yeah so you were there from the very beginning and for for the entire two years of the recorded classes yeah. what what changed on your twin film during during that time and i guess maybe even to take a step back um is like how Let's go there first. Yeah. Once you once you found the teachings, how what changed for you in your life and on your twin flame journey? Um, when I found the teachings, I was well. It was mostly relief. 
that they had some something to yes yeah, some answer mm. so how things work and uh, because i was really confused and i had before all this relationship books like you do this all this uh, this is always goes in the it was yeah I didn't like that so much but yeah that was really like oh I get it I like this mm-hmm. and I uh, uh, yeah all the uh, yeah everything how it's yeah especially how it just works because I often feel like with relationships like it's a bit chaotic or you don't know how and what and yeah it mm-hmm. felt really relieving for me Mm-hmm. that's really cool what you bring up because you know that's actually you know how yeah what you just said with like relationships can be a bit chaotic and it's like if you don't know how to manage that and how to deal with upsets and then there's that there's projection going on and then your twin flame comes into the mix it can all just get kind of like overwhelming and because mm, you were literally just not taught how to deal with relationships and with things mm-hmm. in relationships and that's really really cool about the teachings of union that it helps you with all relationships and how to navigate anything that comes up in any relationship obviously including a twin flame union yeah yeah it's not guessing or uh, yeah like trying things out a million times and then you after years you learn one thing and then you do it better but this is like just uh yeah Mm -hmm. really clear so yeah absolutely so then now we can move on to the the live class bit so what was your experience like to be in the live classes for for two years what was that like well that was very special to me i was Actually, also very impressed that I was in a live class. I didn't know what it meant back then because I was just looking for help and yeah, the best help possible for me. And yeah, then I heard uh, that's really like bring this big change to the world for in love and was mm. took me a while to get yeah, in this that because it's so big. But um, yeah, I really felt like I could was really appreciate myself being there and mm. I loved the playing part in, in that and and I thought also lots of miracles happening and mm. changes and yeah it was really uh, stepping in a different world in a way so mm. yeah I love that and what do you feel were like the main things that you learned during that time in the life classes um yeah the main things like for me that i'm bigger than i thought or like not playing small Mm -hmm. uh, in a way and yeah mostly like also that yeah god is real like i didn't know about god before but um i learned yeah to wake up to that that mm-hmm. are, that we have our relationship with god and that was the biggest eye opener for me at that time um and also my experience with all the other students the the loving community and it's also very different than what i used to um yeah, when I met the, during the time, I started to also meet up with the others, and I could experience that in real life too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was also very special. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I understand that. I always felt like any live meeting that I went with other TIFA students, it's people from Ascension School, people from the community. Uh, we should say that that's always a very, very special thing. Yeah, beautiful. And during that time, what what happened with when it comes to like the twin flame part of your journey? You were still, I believe, exploring your false twin flame yeah. as your twin flame during that time. So what was going on there? And then when when came that time when you started to explore whether you actually might be a false twin flame? Um, yeah, during that time, my false twin flame fell completely away, mm. like in a physical. 
because in the beginning I was still doing a theater show with him, but I start to feel so disconnected with the others, the group, and he was very unsatisfied with how he was partnering with him. And at some point, um, they were telling me just to just uh, not work with them anymore. And not at the time, was didn't make any sense because I didn't do something really horrible or something. But it, now I look back to it, it was just my vibration, like choosing my truth to a thing. Um yeah, for for a long time that's yeah, that was falling away for a long time, but I still had this connection um with this uh these shows and uh, I learned actually at the time to uh communicate with God through that, like all the signs like oh he makes this show, I didn't be this for me or like so I, I during real life classes I was still believing that was my uh, tutor thing, mm-hmm. and I was still a bit attached to him. Um, but yeah, I yeah I really had very little <laughs> contact, and the only contact was all the social media. Um, so the whole time I was mostly on my own mm-hmm. in my experience and just learning to be. Uh, with God myself yeah Mm -hmm. so you had kind of this pretty long part of your twin flame journey where you the person you believe was your twin flame wasn't really that much in your physical reality yeah you you were just working on your things and healing Mm -hmm. whatever came up so I guess question question for that is like do you need to have like your twin flame or your twin flame person do you feel that like because you didn't have him physically with you, you couldn't heal or like you didn't know what to heal or all of that? No, I had a lot. I, I found a lot of ways to cre- communicate and heal. And mm. and now I appreciate that he didn't want to contact with me because I became very creative in finding a connection in, uh, yeah, mostly yeah, other ways than just talking or messaging, and there's so many ways of communication. Um, so I didn't need my trip, I just need God, and I was guided to what was still there. Um, and I, yeah, and through that, I could, yeah, I could work through stuff as well. So mm-hmm. there's always something that you can go deeper with if your trip is not there with you. So, yeah. yeah. I love that. I'm just asking because, you know, sometimes there's this belief when it comes to the twin flame journey that like, okay, if you don't have contact with your twin flame or you don't really know what they're doing or whatnot, Mm -hmm. and, you know, what are you going to do about it? Like, how do you move forward? And I feel like, you know, you sharing about this part on your journey really shows that whatever happens, like your your entire reality helps you to move forward and Mm -hmm your separation and in whatever way it shows up for you if you have a person that you expose your twin flame or if you're let's say for two years you're just like doing your inner healing work not even knowing who your twin flame is like you're still moving closer to your twin flame and you're just healing as efficiently as if they're always in your life and mirroring stuff to you yeah and it also sounds like that period for you was kind of this really beautiful beginning period of like the spiritual journey of you really building a foundation in a relationship with God and mm-hmm. finding out what that looks like for you right yeah 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 the very inner very um yeah I started to mostly build this relationship with God through yeah other ways than this one person <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm very artistic and creative, so God let me, let, let me in that way, like all this creativity, how we can connect with God through that. Mm. And that's perfect for me. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, since we're talking about this, would you? I would love to hear a bit more about how, what creative ways you found to connect with God during that time, because that's also when part of your life purpose, and I believe like when you 
begin to discover more of your life purpose and dive deeper into that mm -hmm. so yeah we'd love to hear more about that yeah well um yeah at the time i was looking for contact with my boss and he kept uh, making theater shows and at that time i thought the shows and the stories he wrote that was symbolic for what my inner world so I was like receiving that as uh, messages um, like for example like he posted like uh, a video of a couple of children dancing and love nature and I was like oh he lost me but this just got the lost just got uh, showing me uh, Kind of similar, like a twin flame dream. If you have a twin flame dream, but then in real life, mm -hmm. uh, just this picture, like where you are in your journey, and and yeah, and also in text messages, like yeah, like looking behind the text, what I feel with them, and just going deeper with the feelings, and yeah, the messages. Um, yeah, that was really cool uh, for me. Like, or I experienced something in my awareness and then matched up with what I saw in posting. Or something. And that, that was purely in my positive frame. Um, yeah, later on, I continued actually with drawings. Uh, that was also with during the time I was making a drawing and Somewhere, Sharia mentioned that I could, that it was more like a joke, but I could uh, manifest my own harmonious union through drawing. And was like, I could try that, uh, what that is like. Um, yeah, I discovered through the drawing, um, yeah, that I could also channel God to it and that it reflect, mirrored also things of my consciousness. Um, I yeah. see. So you're kind of like taking like art basically like as a mirror. Yeah. In what it shows about your consciousness and then you can you can hear that within yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Not if the art feels good, there's just love in that way from God. Yeah. So that is, uh, yeah, that's really cool. Um, yeah, there was also a time that I made it wrong and I felt really that harmonious union energy. Mm. And then, then some, a couple came in harmonious union somewhere after that and I felt this connection like, oh, I connect with harmonious union mm -hmm. and I can channel that energy in, yeah, in my drawings. And yeah, I learned that, that it's really possible that way to connect so yeah cool. it's really cool and it kind of sounds like you know like you've really learned to like channel god through through art yeah yeah and um yeah later on i discovered yeah it can actually be everywhere but that's my mm. was my beginning point because i've i learned mostly through creativity mm -hmm. um yeah, how I to connect with God through my creativity. And I was actually got deeper into that, like more layers of how I could, uh, yeah, ascend to the, like, the way, the way I understand things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So to, to dive a bit deeper into this, because I find this really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. How How did you learn to channel God through your art and build a connection with God in a way that you can do that where how did all of that begin for you and like how did you um cultivate that what was your process there um I think it started when I started with spiritual awakening uh, maybe even before that because I was always interested in yeah, I saw how everyone's art is reflecting their consciousness or like their inner world. And yeah, I could see that with myself as well. Like for example, I drew first art with lines around it and then it stopped uh, with, with, yeah, then it was without lines. And 
felt that was symbolic for releasing, uh, yeah, separation in a way like of this walls. And yeah, but later on, I start to intuitively uh, draw, like just purely on feelings. And I was asking God, yeah, like my heart, um, okay, which color should I pick? I was really uh, purely feeling into that. I was not in my head. I was just like with my hands, okay, which page you, and then which feels peaceful or which feels good. And I was drawing and until I felt like, um, yeah, my hand stopping in a way. So I let really something you know, guiding me. I didn't know that at the time, but it felt really good to just communicate. Like, what should I, uh, which way should I move? Or, yeah, purely feeling and intuitively. And yeah, I kept going with that um, because it just feels really nice to do that. So, mm -hmm. so when it, what advice would you have for people that in their life purpose struggle with being in their head and yeah what's your advice for how to how to get out of that um yeah focus on your heart um yeah with the art is just for me it was without words so that helps for me because it's very visual and yeah, it's, it might be good to find a way that's not uh, not with words or with a lot of thoughts. Um, and just really feel into that, just uh, like see it as a meditation, like an active meditation and keep practicing that. And, and release, yeah, like usually release the resistance and where you feel that resistance and love yourself, like with acting um, yeah it's really surrender yeah, yeah with everything surrender and mm. yeah great and um yeah where do you with what you oh no actually i'm gonna ask you another question first so when in this process of you discovering how you co-create your art with god and channel god through your your art what what role did the teachings of union play when it comes to you coming to that place in your life purpose and you discovering more of your life purpose and diving into that? Um, well, I could see how I couldn't manifest miracles that way. Like, because I put so much love in the art that it's... Um, could then see in my reality also changes happening and the teachings teach you like when you share love, yeah, that's like coming back and but also just the mere exercise like when I can't draw something like that I mirror it like oh these hands are like uh not working. Okay, what does this mirror to me and I can dive deeper um yeah, and then after that, it's easier to draw that. It's a kind of like, yeah, a faster way to process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just feels really good. And yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's great. And um, when it comes to your life purpose and your art what what kind of visions and dreams do you have for it like what are some of the things you you envision and dream about doing one day or you have maybe already planned um so many things i i think uh, yeah this is mostly i really dream of visually expressing my inner world my inner experiences and um, yeah, I recently had the idea to actually someday in a movie, <laughs> like uh, with all the set design or uh, yeah, just expressing my style in yeah different ways, uh, yeah, movie or 
uh, yeah, also more children's books. I, I find I really illustrated children's, children's books and expressing the twin flame journey too. And, and also like, I also see myself creating healing art that, yeah, I create art and that people receive actually healing with it because I put love in it and, and yeah, explaining to frames also, yeah, in a very visual way, the spiritual journey and in pictures and mm. things like that. So a lot of ideas that I, yeah, I've always created ideas. It's, mm. it's really nice. That sounds really, really great. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing you do these things. And I remember I I think I once saw your post and mentioned this that you at one point were looking into how like to do the mirror exercise with images and especially for children. Yeah, yeah, I've um started to explore that. That's uh with images like just oh I'm upset that this that there's an image of angry person and the another person and just uh yeah explaining that to children in a very easy way like because um, um in my experience words are not enough to uh fully explain it so I thought well yeah but yeah to the pictures to really simple way. Um, and I even sometimes draw the mirror exercise. I make sketches with it because I see all this myself, my inner child, like crying or whatever. And or I draw myself hooking her, and it's really, um, yeah. It's uh, I, in my experience. It's really helpful mm. to also have a visual support. So. I, I really love this. It's almost like, you know, what comes to mind is like what you just mentioned with drawing. It's kind of like what, what some people do is like they, um, what's that word? Like do just like free writing and mm -hmm. just like journal out like the feelings. And then you come like to these, you realize things and you get clear on your feelings and whatnot. And it sounds like what you're doing is just the same thing, just not with words, but with drawings. Yeah. And that to to bring you clarity and to get down to okay what what is my upset and what do I have to heal here yeah. and also like you start at the same time as part of the healing when you're drawing it do, do yeah. I understand that correctly uh yeah I'm healing myself or I, I get clear on something and then I draw sketches and then I get more clear of course I do like you know, the normal writing, the mirror exercise, but the uh, sketches are really helpful to, to get clear. And sometimes I even draw myself like the the step four, the yeah to really ground it, um, to yeah to have a visual to see it and to fully support myself in that way. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. No, I really love that. It's just kind of, you know, how everyone does like the mirror exercise in their like own unique way. So like when you learn it, you have the book and you, the Twin Films Universe Finding Ultimate Lover book, and then you write down the four steps and you, you then kind of integrate that. And then everyone starts to, some people visualize, some people like everyone uses different methods and their own yeah unique style a bit. And I, I find this really cool that you're talking about this because it really shows how the possibilities are endless when it comes to being creative about your healing. And I, mm -hmm. and when we're talking about this, I have to think about this one twin film ascension school class where Jeff and Shalia use sounds as a way to hear. Mm -hmm. And everyone in that class was making sounds to express the upset in the sound to hear the upset. And yeah, yeah there's so many creative ways to. Yeah go about healing and have that be do, do that in a way that's like fun for you and enjoyable for you and really works for you yeah yeah that's yeah everyone has their own way yeah that's cool you should do you, are you are you considering every ever doing workshops on this and teaching this to other people how to do it with art uh yeah i've been thinking about it and yeah that's it's, it's definitely sometime i go do that 
you should definitely do that i would be there <laughs> so yeah now let's to to kind of go back to um where we left off when it comes to the turn frame part of your turn frame journey we took a bit of a tour now into into life purpose area um but with your twin film i believe we were left off where you were still in twin film ascension school in the life classes and then you were in that time where you you didn't have any contact with your false twin flame and build your relationship with god and as the next question i'm curious like when did you first begin to realize that that's not your false twin flame and what caused you to to realize that um well i, I already had signs during the life classes like i was yeah, I lived with Tim, so I was healing something. And then he, exactly that, he came home and he was away and then was healing something and came home again. And I was like, this is weird. <laughs> like he, like he reacted the right through to the plane, re mm -hmm. reacted on that and was also a moment in the life because, yeah, that I thought I would call my to him and that same night I did call my true to him for, yeah, I was invited to watch a movie. And I was like, this is weird. I'm not calling my false, but this. Hmm. So, yeah, there were several moments that I felt something with him. It's, it's only after life classes that I was, uh, someone's after that, was thinking back at everything I experienced with my true trip flame. Mm -hmm. that uh, all these little things that felt really loving or that I was secretly like looking at him and mm -hmm. falling in love or and yeah then I put that together and yeah at Christmas summer I was drinking tea with him and he mentioned he said there were twin flames and and I felt something in my heart like mm -hmm. uh, touching where uh yeah he was just asking what I uh, was doing because he knew a little bit about uh what I was doing here mm -hmm. and I felt something and it was really weird and it was there something and yeah just slowly I started to wake up to that and yeah then I there was also at the time that everyone released their false thing. Mm -hmm. And I saw that and I, yeah, I thought more about, yeah, I was releasing my positive flame as well because it was very clear to me that energy was really bad. Mm -hmm. And then I saw uh, someone else discovering her roommate was her twin flame. And I was like, what, wait, roommate? <laughs> and yeah, and then everything came to the, the, together and was, oh, shit, yeah. So, yeah, I knew it. I, I had several times I was way, uh, trying to process, but it was only back then that I could really see it. Yeah. Mm, I see. And how, how did you feel when you realized that your roommate is a true twin flame? Um, I felt it weird, like, oh shit, I was the whole time I was lying or escaping from it. And, yeah, it was really like a big, uh, oh my God moment, mm. like a big change. And what I remember um, was that I felt like, because I was so always focused on art or like my inner child, I felt like I was stepping through a door, like as if I was a cartoon character to a real person. And it was, uh, yeah, very spiritual experience. Um, I was also a bit scared, but I moved through that fear and then I could see more and more, oh, he's really me and mm. I could really feel myself and he made me laugh at some point uh, during that process. And I felt, yeah, I felt this really deep happiness or really deep that, that laughter. I was really laughing from my heart, like something deep in my heart. and. And I was like, okay, that is, you, you can make me laugh. And I, not like anyone else. And yeah, so I felt, um, yeah, really happy with that. It was 
it's very scary, but mm. after, yeah, just accepting it, you feel really happy and, mm -hmm. yeah, very deep too, very deep happiness, like soul, soul happiness. And, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. And did you, did you talk about him without, like, about being too in flames right afterwards or how, what uh, happened, what, what did you do once you realized you, he's my twin flame? Well, I didn't talk that much about it yet because I, I didn't know how to communicate that. It was, um, that's only after a month or so. That's, yeah, I basically had to talk with him because I thought everyone, hey, my twin flame is my roommate, you know, and, and yeah, I talked more, I started more like, uh, oh, I like you and stuff. And that was really scary because he, didn't uh, see that the same, um, but I started to, after that, I started to quickly uh, share that if it's actually, I gave him the book <laughs> to read and he I read it and also some uh, church of union services watching with me. So yeah, it's really after I told him that I quickly started to explain Twin flames to him, and and he yeah he started to watch some videos himself, and it was uh, it was I was struggling a bit to share it, but I yeah was still that time okay mm. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah mm. so kind of like just taking one baby step after the next yeah. Mm. And um, did you did you guys started to partner up when it comes to your life purpose? Are you doing something together? Um, well, it was very gently actually. It was still very inner, but I started to do more uh, around the house. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I started to paint, and there was there's one room I started to love, but like. I, I was like, okay, let's change this room to better. And then sometime later, he added to it by buying a bed and or like helping with cleaning and adding stuff. Uh, after after time I healed to something, he added stuff too, and mm. it was really cool to see. His, um, yeah, that's uh, where visitors stay sleeping to like we share love in that way it's very very unexpected but yeah I, I love that that it happened that way just in the house where we started to come together that we make the house better and that's yeah part of the foundation so mm. and what do you feel you you're healing in your union at the moment or generally since you you found out that he's your twin flame would have been like the the themes or the things you have been working on to go deeper with him. Um, yeah, it's mostly around discovering more about myself mm -hmm. because he yeah, had a lot of different interests and not different way of seeing things. That I was at first like, how can this by by twin pain? But there's all these invitations to. Uh, yeah, discover more about myself and um, yeah there was also more trauma I was healing um, and I feel the biggest thing is just accepting that yeah that he brings up deep stuff within me and that can be healed and yeah to really face fears with the uh, his yeah of course he triggered a lot and and when I yeah, I accepted that. I felt really deep love with them and the romance. Um, yeah, so it's really like the, yeah, healing around having a real relationship uh, with another and not only in life purpose or creativity, but like really a personal relationship. And that's what I'm still gaining. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so far, while healing this, what were like, I guess, kind of like the, the 
lessons you feel you learned or like the realizations you've had about what it means to have a real relationship with someone with your twin flame in this case um well what i'm thinking of now what he told me is that love can get gone to anyone mm-hmm. not just with this way when that's yeah he really put boundaries so i could see that that uh yeah that i can experience love with anyone and connect with anyone that feels good to me mm. and that's also really important for my life purpose um, yeah he, he shows me that a lot because he connects a lot with other people and there's a lot of friends and uh, yeah I used to be very on my own but yeah that's the biggest thing he is showing me that that's and that it's safe because in the same frame, it's always deeper. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's safe to go deeper. If it feels good to go deeper with anyone else, because at some point, it's if they was even deeper than that. And mm-hmm. yeah, beautiful. Well, then I have one last question for you, mm-hmm. and it would be if you could go back to the very beginning of your journey and give that version of yourself a message, what what would you say to her? Mm. Yeah, to be compassionate with myself because it's a big, big thing, same thing. So yeah, be compassionate and gentle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love that. That's really so important. And it's actually one of the eight keys to the foundation of your harmonious union that Jeff and Chile have in the book. It's compassion. And yeah, definitely cannot be overestimated how important it is on this journey. Great. Well, then it was a pleasure having you here today and listening to your story. Thank you for sharing all of this with us. Thank you. In this case, and with our listeners. And yeah, for everyone who is listening, thank you very much for being here and listening. And I want to invite all of you to head over to twinflamesuniverse.com where you can find all of the products that help you to hear twin flame separation and discover your true life purpose and how to create a foundation in the life of your dreams. We also have a free Twin Flame introduction course over there on the website that you can sign up for free. I, I really love that course and I feel it's like really such a wonderful like introduction to the Twin Flame journey and to really understand how everything works and how you can have a successful Twin Flame journey and manifest your harmonious union. And Otherwise, we will be back next week with another episode. And in the meantime, I wish all of you many blessings on your journey.